Hello everyone, it's been a while since I have created a tutorial video. However, I am back to bring you some exciting new content. In this video, I'm going to show you how to resolve some common issues with iSCSI. I'm going to be using Windows 7 and Windows Server 2016. This should also work with Windows Server 2012 as well as other versions of Windows such as Windows 8 and Windows 10. Eventually, I will update my Windows 7 machine to Windows 10 whenever that happens. Anyway, there are a lot of tutorials and videos showing how to create an iSCSI share and then connecting it would be as simple as entering the IP address, authenticate, and then everything should just show up here. But unfortunately, that was not the case with me. So I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot as I didn't really see any good guides on how to do that. So when it comes to troubleshooting, you should consider three important things. So first thing is that you need to check that you have proper network connectivity between the initiator and the target computer. So the initiator would be this workstation, so Windows 7, and then the target would be Windows Server 2016. So if you don't know the difference between an initiator and a target, um, the best way to remember is the initiator is the one that's asking someone, like let's say someone on a date, and that would be the target, um, the, um, the person you're talking to. So now you'll never forget the difference between the initiator and what the target is. So once you have resolved the issues between network connectivity, you want to check that you have the correct target portal IP address or DNS name um, configured on the initiator. So that would be under this target. So you'd have to make sure that you have the right IP address. You're connecting to the right to the right server. And lastly, this is the one that's most overlooked, and this is what happened to me. You have the wrong IQN for the initiator assigned when you created the iSCSI target. So also, um, for the first thing on troubleshooting with the network connectivity, you also want to make sure that everything is um, is proper with the Windows firewall, so you have the right um, iSCSI ports configured to go through it. Um, by default, when you set up iSCSI, an iSCSI target on Windows Server, like you enable the role, um, everything with the firewall should be opened up uh, for chain, uh, such as port 3260. So I'll go to my Windows Server um, 2016. So I already have my iSCSI shared created. So I have done everything that most people would have done. I have my IQ in. This is the name of, this sh of the iSCSI share and then the IP address of the server. I have basic security, just um, chap, and then, yeah, that's it. I have a map to a volume. Um, so first thing, let's talk about network connectivity. Just to make things a little bit interesting and a little bit more complicated, um, I am actually running um, two network cards on this workstation. So I have a two gigabit line where there are two one gigabit uh, connections that are teamed together to provide more bandwidth. Um, so when the network is busy, I can ensure that I'm getting my one gigabit transfer across both lanes. That's the whole purpose of teaming. Um, teaming actually doesn't increase your network speed, but rather increase bandwidth. So the best analogy is think of a, of, of a highway system and traffic. So if you want to speed up traffic, um, have more, uh, sorry, support more traffic, you need more lanes. And this is exactly what I'm doing. So don't get confused about, um, that kind of fundamental with uh, with link teaming, um, but it, um, it's an important thing to have um, when you're doing uh, network storage is that you want to have enough um, bandwidth and as well as speed. So this is why I'm actually using my 10 gigabit line. So I have these teamed up as 20 gigabit. So very important thing um, when it comes to networking. Um, next thing is you want to make sure you have connectivity with the server. I already remoted into the server, so. Um, the network is working okay. But just to prove everything is working good, you want to um, try to ping the server. So ping 10.0.0.1, that's the IP address of the server. And then the IP address of this machine with this network interface is 10.0.0.2. So I set it up with no internet access. This is connected directly um, to um, to the server, and then this one is outbound to the world and and if, and, uh, and the other devices. So this is strictly point to point. So make sure you resolve the network connections and also check your firewall. 
Um, so then let's go to the next part. Let's let's actually demonstrate the issue that I was having. So if I go to, um, so first thing, since I'm using multiple network cards, you want to go to, to discovery. Don't go to the target. Um, this would be only useful, in my opinion, if you had one um, network um, network interface. However, I have multiple. So I'm going to go to discover portal, enter the IP address of the server. You want to make sure this is correct. So I'm going to enter 10.0.0.1. This is for my setup. And then go to advanced. If I go to local adapter, um, it should I should actually um, pick the iSCSI initiator because it might be confused. But since I entered 10.0.0.1, by default, um, Windows knows how to do um, do routing and knows how to do basic networking. So this would actually show up as 10.0.0.2 as the initiator IP. But just to make sure everything is correct, we're gonna do, make sure everything, we're gonna do this manually. So click on the iSCSI initiator. You might have multiple depending on your setup. And then click the right IP address. This is the IP address of the two gigabit network, but we want the faster one. And then click OK. Um, you might also notice there's some authentication. Um, I don't need that for um, for discovery uh, for my setup, but depending on your setup, if you're going through um, different security stuff, you might have to authenticate. Um, but um, check with your settings. So click OK, and then an interesting thing is when I go to refresh, I should see um, my um, my target spot. However, I'm not seeing it. So let's go resolve that. So we need to go under configuration and we need to find our initiator name. So this is our initiator name. You can give it whatever you want, but I'm just using a default. We're gonna right click on it and copy it. And then we're gonna go back to the Windows server. And then we're gonna go under iSCSI target right here. And then we have to go under properties. And then we're gonna go to initiator and we're gonna add our, our initiator to our target address. Sometimes, um, this is a step that is um, overlooked. I already have it right here, but if you don't have it in here, you add it under here for value. Um, so make sure you do that, otherwise you will not see your iSCSI targets when you're under discovery. So click on that, click apply, and in a few moments notice, um, this should be done. And then we already resolved part number two of the troubleshooting, which was um, if you have the wrong uh, target portal at IP address, um, so we have we I know this is this is correct. It's also listed right here. This is the address for the iSCSI share. Click OK, and we can minimize the server window. So now, if we go under targets, um, click refresh, we should see that pops up. There we go. Everything worked. So now we're going to connect to it. And then I have, as I mentioned, I have authentication. So we're going to go to advanced and we're not going to use the default settings. We want to make sure we're using the correct adapter. It should do it correctly, but sometimes I don't really trust things. I just, it's better to do it manually if you know, especially if you know what you're, what you're doing. So click on initiator, click on the right IP address for that. Remember these two aren't routable with each other. So they want to talk to each other. To each other. So obviously Windows should know that, but for good measure, just select the right one. And then the same thing with the IP address. So we're on this correct IP uh, address space. And then we got to authenticate. So let me enter my credentials. And then click OK. And then we see we are connected. So now I don't see the storage um, on here. What do I need to do? So we need to go under um, computer management. So we go manage, or we can just type it in computer management. And then we're going to go to uh, disk management. And then we're going to go all the way down here, and we see our iSCSI disk right here. We need to turn this disk to be online. This is kind of just a normal process of when you add a brand new hard drive to your computer for more storage. You're going to be doing the same exact process. So nothing is really too new. Click online and then we're going to format it. 
Oh, we have to initialize it. And then we're going to format it. So right click on it, new simple volume, and then uh, just use the defaults. Uh, pick the right drive letter you want. I'll use N. And then I'll give it a name. I'm going to call it um, installed programs. Matrix rewrite. I'm gonna actually call this Atlas uh, Shared because this is actually coming from the server. You can give whatever name you want, and then uh, click Next and then Finish. And there we go. We have um, oh, that's weird. A little weird that didn't work or that crashed. That's a first. Anyway, um, now we have storage right here. Let's try copying something to it. Let's go to a movie I created. Um, just copy some stuff over here. So we're getting very good speed. Um, this is over the um, 10 gigabit network link. So we see that everything is working proper. So again, let's review on the troubleshooting uh, methods. So first thing is make sure you resolve network connectivity between the initiator, your client side, and then the target, so the server. So you need to make sure that you have that done. If you don't have your network up, there's no way you're gonna get um, iSCSI to be working. The next thing is make sure you're connecting to the right, um, to the right system, the right server. So that means you have to have the right um, portal IP address or DNS name whatever is configured for the initiator and then also on the target side. And lastly, the most overlooked thing, and this is what happened to me, is you have the wrong IQN for the initiator assigned when you created your iSCSI target. So you need to assign your initiator um, IQN to the target. So you can always get that information under the iSCSI initiator property of your machine that you're gonna be adding storage to under configuration. You copy this simply to the Windows um, server under the um, target settings um, and then you're pretty much good to go under target. Authenticate if needed. You should be using security in this day. Um, you could also, I could probably improve a little bit on it, but it's better than no security because if someone gets on my network, they'd have to do a little bit more work to try and access the share. So that's pretty much it um, when it comes to resolving some issues when you have iSCSI target, um, targets not showing up. So um, Hopefully this was helpful and everything like that. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And as always, have a nice day.